Hello, and welcome back for part two of our fur brush tutorial, long overdue. Let's get into it. So first, uh, we'll be working on this uh, wire and base. Link down below if you want to check it out. And I just prepared a small patch of two colors of fur following uh, the previous tutorial. So go be sure to check that out if you'd like to know how to get to this step. This tutorial is going to focus on what we do next to get this into Unity, get this on a VR chat avatar, and we're going to be doing that with Pyomi, though a lot of the, uh, the approaches and techniques will be valid for other shaders as well. All right, let's start by exporting our albedo map, the color. Go we'll Control Shift E to bring up the export menu. You can also get it, get to it through file. Now there, you can certainly set up like an export that's really well tuned for Unity and Pyomi, uh, but I find that just going with the Unity Universal Renderer Pipeline metallic shader works good for the most part, and uh, it's just generally what I use as well. Uh, personal preference, but I like setting the texture to dilation plus transparent for most cases. And we'll just hit export on that. So that will generate a couple of files. The one that we'll look at here, our albedo map, this is the color, and you can see the patches on there. Now, over in Unity Town, we open up Unity, and again I've started just with a base wiring. We're going to create a new material, let's call this body. Let's grab our albedo and our normal that we just exported, and I'll rename them to body and body normal. We'll load those into Unity, and you can see them down here. Let's apply the body texture by dragging it, or the body material, by dragging it onto the avatar. You can also apply materials, especially for ones that you can't quite get to. If you click on the body, and there'll be a list of materials right here that you can apply directly as well. This can be handy, especially for things like eyes that are behind eye covers that you can't can't quite click and drag to. For the body, we're going to be using Pyomi. Specifically, we have version 8.1 on here. And we'll just do this as a standard Pyomi tune. Everything will be quite white. So let's build kind of how I go for a more realistic fur. We start by dragging our albedo into the texture map. You can see that in there. And then our normal into the normal map. You might get a prompt from Unity that this needs to be marked as a normal. Go ahead, accept that. Now if we go in here, we can see that it doesn't look quite as clean as it does in Substance Painter. If I go back to Substance Painter, you can see we have a lot more detail. To fix this, we need to tell Unity that we want it to treat this texture as 4K. By default, it will set it to 2K. And we'll do this for both our normal and our body, our albedo. You don't necessarily want to do this for every map because it will drastically increase the size of the avatar. So we click on the texture, click override for Windows Mac Linux, and then we can select 4K, the 4096, and apply. And you'll see, bam, we get our texture back. We'll do the same thing on the normal. All right, going back into the material itself. Right now it's set to a tune lighting, so you can see with this very flat lighting, we want it to go realistic. So we'll go into shading settings, under shading, and switch lighting type to realistic. Then I set the add pass shading to realistic as well. Perfect. Next, we want to add a rim light. So by default, this fur will look a little flat still. Uh, and to fix that, we want to give it like a little bit of, of extra texture. And I find a really easy way of doing that is through the rim light. 
So if we go down, we turn on our rim light. Now by default, this will look wrong, right? This doesn't look like fur. This looks kind of like textured plastic, maybe. And so what we need to do is we need to tell the rim light that we only really want it to apply to parts that are relevant to higher parts up in the fur. We go back over to Substance Painter. We actually have a way of generating that. So let's generate a rim lighting mask. So we'll do that by clicking on our top level, just so we'll make a new folder. And I like to make a separate folder like this. We'll call this, you know, rim lighting, rim. We'll add, start by just adding two fill layers. The bottom fill layer, we'll set to just black. This will be our backing. The top fill layer, we'll set to white. And all we need to do is grab our, our fur data tips. And we can do that even outside of the fur brush kind of uh, folder by selecting this to be a white mask. Add filter. Add our fur brush filter. Set it to tips. We'll need to click on this fur height and link it back down to our fur data that we generated before. And then adjust settings. I like to run something kind of like this. We want it to be kind of hot, the high sections of the fur, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit thinner. Something like that. Then we'll export that. Again, Control Shift E. And let's call this body rim. And bring that into our Unity project. So now what we'll do is under the mask and bias for the rim lighting, we'll grab that material and put it in there and bam, right off the bat, we have something that looks a lot more like fur. Okay, but we're not quite done. If I, uh, oh, and you might get a prompt that it wants a different type of texture. Actually, that looks even better. But we wanna do a couple other things. And so let's we'll, we'll step back. I'll just remove that for one moment, just so we can kind of see a bit more clearly what we're doing for some of these other settings. First off, fur doesn't usually just you know, have this kind of white rim on it. It'll usually be the color of the texture below it. Now in this particular version, we can see that we have an option to mix base color. So let's mix a bunch of color. We want like a little bit of the room light to come through. So maybe something like that. We also want the rim to have a tiny little bit of emission. I usually go with like a 0.05. Next, we want to make sure that we hide the rim light in shadows. And in this version of Pyomi, we do that by turning on the light direction mask. And then we can play with the shadow mask strength slider. So you can see that we can affect how much of the shadow goes through. So let's go with a little bit there. Again, we want a little bit of the light to come around because the first sticking out should catch a little bit of the light. Next go a little bit wider because again, the fur will catch the light. And now let's go back to our body rim texture, body rim mask on there. And that's it. We like, just like that, we've given it a little bit of depth. If I turn off the rim lighting, you can see the difference. And it seems quite subtle, but as well in, in VR chat, this does give kind of that really nice fluffy depth effect. So I hope you found that useful. That's my quick tutorial on how you take the lessons learned from part one and put them onto an avatar with Pyomi ready to go into VR chat or any other program that you're using it for. We'll probably come up with a part three for some more advanced blending techniques. So keep an eye out for that. Hope you enjoyed. Bye bye